All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I bought a very cheap EV. What I've bought is a 2016 Nissan Leaf. This one's got the 30 kilowatt hour battery, so the range won't be great. With early leaves, Nissan gave you two options. You could either buy the car and then lease the battery, or buy the car outright, and then the battery is just your risk. With the battery leased cars, yes, it was quite expensive. Sometimes you'd pay £100 a month for that battery lease. But if it ever broke or the range became so poor, they'd replace it free of charge. Whereas with the battery owned ones, then it's just your risk. I'm not a big EV fan, as I've said many times before. I just don't think we're ready for them yet. But this is one of the cheapest ways of getting behind the wheel of an EV. I don't want this to be sitting on my forecourt for a long time. So I won't be greedy. I'll just put a small profit margin on it and try and move it on quickly. Right, so anyway, I'll see you there. Well, we're here. <sighs> There's such a tragic looking car, aren't there, the Nissan Leaf? There's nothing remotely nice about that, with its big, ugly, frog-eyed headlamps. Big bulging batty. Just isn't an attractive car, is it? At all. Still, I think at £3,800 it is cheap. It needs a good clean. Headlamps are alright. Number plates are alright. Got very little to do here, you know? Very little. How many miles range do you think you can get out of that? That is a seven, eight year old Nissan Leaf. We'll soon find out, won't we? Right, as always then, I'm going to do a quick vehicle history check using Car Vertical. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in either the VIN or the registration number. In this case, it is Delta Victor 16 November Delta Uniform. There we go. By the way, if you want to do one of these checks for yourself, and I urge you to do so before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike, Car Vertical are now offering 20% off with my promo code, HIGHPEAK. So it isn't 10% anymore, it's a full 20. And it just tells you things like whether it's been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or got outstanding finance on it. It also tells you the ownership change, it tells you a bit about the car, the MOT history, all that sort of stuff. And it isn't just a UK thing either, it works in 35 different countries. So do check them out. Remember that promo code is HIGHPEAK, or alternatively, click the link below in the video description. And the report's ready. So, view report. Right, we've got two amber warnings here then. This is interesting. We've got an amber warning on the odometer. Right, I think this is an input error, to be honest. This is a, a typo. But it just shows you how this report works, doesn't it? So, if you look here, at the last MOT, or the last recorded mileage in January 24, it was showing 5,000 miles. Now, I'm guessing that's probably the trip, or, you know, someone's typed in the wrong mileage but it's worth doing some checks, isn't it? So it's been fairly consistent, well, very consistent every single year, and then all of a sudden, it falls off a cliff edge. So that's one amber warning. Then we've got another amber warning for finance and, all oh, right, okay. This vehicle may have financial restrictions. The last known selling price was 7,000 pounds for it. Now I thought, to be honest, I thought that was a six and a half grand to seven grand car. But like I said at the start, I don't want it sitting around for ages, so I'm just gonna be fair with it and move it on quickly. So that is a Nissan Leaf. It's called a multi-purpose vehicle. It has a 30 kilowatt hour battery. Electric, automatic, all done. There we go, right. It was registered in March 2016. Ownership changed in 2019. It was on sale in December 23. Right, okay. Well, what's this finance business about then? Now, luckily for me, I've bought this from a main dealer who I deal with all the time, so this isn't an issue, but it's showing unit stocking. This is a question that I get asked often, actually, when someone's buying a car. They'll email me and say, oh, Matt, I've just done a car vertical, and it says, outstanding finance, unit stocking. What does that mean? Right. Most car dealers, I've never done this, to be honest, but most car dealers, uh, because cars are quite expensive, they have a stocking plan. So they'll have a 250 grand loan, for example, and that will enable them to go out and buy stock. So they go into the stocking plan, type in the reg, and then that will fund that car, for example. Then the minute it sells, you pay back that stocking loan, and then it's not an issue at all. It isn't the same as having private finance on something, but that's what that means. So it's not an issue. I'll just speak to the main dealer, they'll pay that off, and away we go. But anyway, that's quite interesting to see, isn't it? Let's go and look at this Nissan, Nissan Leaf. Okay then. Well, it's white, as most of them were, either white or blue. We've got two keys, and I've just seen the little keyless button on the door handle, so it's obviously a keyless entry, keyless uh, start job. I mean, uh, condition-wise, it looks all right. A bit dirty. Uh, we've got a Polish tire on the front on five mil. That is a good year. It's quite good. 
Around the back we've got a curbed wheel and we've got another good year, that's a good sign then. Two good years, that one's on about four mil. Leaf the fuel pumps behind. That would've been a good slogan for them, wouldn't it? What's plural for leaf, is it leaves? Uh, what can I tell you? Apart from it being a hideously ugly car. It is in decent condition, isn't it really? We've got two good years, three good years, four good years, four good years. Right, that's all right then, isn't it? It doesn't look like it's ever had paint, which is a good thing because I think this is that three-stage pearl and it's a bit of a nightmare to, to try and match. It's very ugly, isn't it? I said this years ago, but all these EVs, manufacturers were just making them look as weird as possible. Why don't they just make them look like a normal car? We're missing a parcel shelf. So I'm gonna have to go on eBay on to spend hundred pounds. Well, it's a bit moldy actually. I think this has been sitting for some time. This is why I've got it from the main dealer. It's been sitting, they couldn't shift it. And then I get a phone call. Hey Matt, do you wanna buy a leaf? Yeah, okay, go on then. Moving around the back then. You need some mats. That's, um, Tunnel's quite intrusive, isn't it? Right, service history then. It's come from the car shop. Is there any service history? Do you have service records on a on a leaf? Right, well it's all quite clean, isn't it, apart from the mould? Driver's seat's a bit saggy. Uh, what else can I tell you? Let's have a look under the bonnet. There she is. Uh, oh, more leaves. Leaves everywhere. Nothing to report there of any interest or significance, is there? Should we fire her up then? Try and get some heat on. So, maybe a little start button. There we go. It's quite a low spec, this, because I've just got a plastic steering wheel rather than a leather one. We've got cloth. Open the door. Uh, turn that off before I get a copyright strike. What have we got then? Radio 2. Have we got a reverse camera? We do. Look at the quality. There's a sticker there. Can you see the outline of where, where they've had a sticker? Either something like a do not smoke, or it's been like a council-owned vehicle, perhaps. We've got a battery battery capacity status. But current battery status, that. Is that halfway? It's not great, is it, I don't think. What else can I show you? Turn the heater up a little bit. Set that to auto. We've got 17 miles range from a third of a tank. That isn't good, is it? It's in decent condition though, really, isn't it? I can't, can't complain too much. Have we got any free glasses? No. Nope. Lots of travel on the handbrake. It's only done 34,747 miles though, so quite low miles. Turn my fan down a little bit, I can't hear myself think. We've got sat-nav, that's all good. Bit of Billy Joel. Can't escape Billy Joel at the moment. Well, that's about it, isn't it? I can't really tell you much else. Do my windows work? They do, they're a bit squeaky. Hmm. Right, well, I suppose we should go and drive this, shouldn't we, and see what it's like, see how it performs. I've got 17 miles in the tank, so we need to go and plug it in somewhere, don't we? Either at the garage or in a public charging spot. We could do that, you know. Let's do that. See how she drives. Okay then, right. First time driving the Nissan Leaf. Move my microphone so you can hear me. This reeks of a car that's just been parked on someone's forecourt for two months because they couldn't shift it. Which I'll be honest, does worry me a tad. Makes me think I've been slotted into a problem car here. I hope that isn't the case, but the used motor trade is a bit cutthroat really. And I do have something of a reputation for just saying yes to everything, which isn't always great, but I mean, it's got me to where I am today, hasn't it? So I must be doing something right, I suppose. Should we sting it? 
Let's stay. Oh, oh, that surprised me actually. Wow, that is genuinely quite quick. Do you remember? I could be wrong here now. I could be wrong, but I, I seem to remember when these were launched, the 0 to 30 time or the 0 to 35 time was quicker than an M5. Might be wrong there with that fact, but I'm sure. I remember reading that at the time thinking, wow. Obviously, I'd still rather have an M5. It is nice to have a bit of, bit of power. Well, it's very smooth, quite quick, silent. It's got a bit going for it, really, apart from its range, because I'm now down to 16 because I stung it. So what do we need to do with this one, then? We need to MOT it and check it over and make sure it's all fine and safe. Give it a proper valet, get rid of the mould, re-photograph it, put a thin margin across it, and then stick it on the forecourt. That's what I need to do. There should be quite a nice, easy turnaround, this. First things first, though, I need to go and charge it. I'm going to try these public charging points around at the back of the garage. This car's kind of making me eat my words because it's all right. I know it isn't the prettiest, but as a little city car, a little town car, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It probably wouldn't be any good to me, to be honest, because I live 24 miles away from work and I couldn't get there and back on a single shot. Or maybe I just about could. I'm thinking this has probably got a 50 mile range. I had a Mercedes B-Class electric on a 15 or 16 recently, which sold straight away, actually. Again, I used the same theory because I kind of panicked with it. I didn't really know, I don't know this market at all. So I think I put an 800 pound margin across it or something just to move it on quickly. And truth be told, after I paid for a service at SPR and ordered a parcel shelf for it and something else, a charging lead, I made about 300 pounds. It wasn't the best deal. But anyway, it's gone and the money's been reinvested. So I think I've got to do the same with this. But that B-Class, that had a 20... 5 kilowatt hour battery or 27 or something it was quite small and the range on that was about 55 it wasn't great but it still sold so obviously somebody bought it and thought that would fit in with our you know lifestyle so that's really quick you know surprise me more modern EVs might have cured the whole range anxiety thing but with these early ones I do get terrible range anxiety every time I drive one I'm driving now thinking I've got 16 miles I can't venture too far because then I'll just break down on the side of the road. There Low we go. Battery charge. All right. Yeah. Loud, isn't she? What should we do then, boys and girls? Let me go and see if I can figure out this public charging point. These early EVs have, what do they call it? A Chadamo charger or something? You can tell how interested I am, can't you, in this? I think it's called a Chadamo. So let's go and see if we can't figure out how to use it. Don't like the plastic steering wheel, I must admit. quite keep this to yourselves I quite like this be handy just to nip around in wouldn't it you know maybe this is the start of a whole new world for me maybe I've turned over a new leaf I'm not proud of myself battery level is low and now it's flashing 14 14 14 well this isn't the worst thing I've ever driven but why couldn't the main dealer sell it why, why, why? I mean, on the bright side, this is zero road tax. Now I've got a test drive there on my Lexus NX. I just hope now that there's a free charging point. Oh, there is, look at this. Textbook. Is there a Chadamo then? Uh, uh, don't know. I honestly don't know. Let's go and have a look, shall we? So I shall turn the car off. That's all fine. Uh, we'll pop that. Pop a cap. So I need to open the little flap. There we go. Now we've got two options here. I don't know what either of those mean. Let's try and figure this out then. So, I'm gonna touch that. Card payment, I don't know what RFID is. Start charge. Tap card. There we go. Initiating card identifications, right? Okay, that's done. Approved, we're all ready to go. Which one have we got? Select your connector. Does it look like that one? the two big things in it. I think it does, doesn't it? 
See that one? It's that one, isn't it? Connect Chadamo, there we go. There we go, right. Don't like this name. Well, that's a good idea, isn't it? Why would they build a bay like that? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave that off. Bear with me a second while I move this car. Welcome to EVs, guys. Watch somebody steal my spot now. That's some tragic parking. No one sees this. Chadamo. We in? Reserve cancel, why has that not worked? Oh, rats. Don't get this at the petrol station, do you? Come on, you there. Right, let's start this process again then, hang on. Plug the bugger back in. Charge. As you can probably tell, I'm quite an impatient man. Give me some electricity. How annoying is this, really? How annoying? Stop charge. It's not even highlighted though, is it? No plugs charging. Choose an option, start. Here we go, now we're cooking, I think. Start charge. Right. Here comes the rain. Let's see how long this takes, because I'm really not a fan of this sort of stuff. Chadamo. Connect your vehicle, right. Weighs a ton, this. We're on. Start. Making some noises, making some whirring noises. Are we on? I think that's working. I would say so. Right, it's lit up there. There we go, right, now we've got some flashing lights here on the dash, can you see those? There we go. I think then guys, just before it lashes down, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave this on charge for a few hours. It's an old battery system there, so it might take quite a while. I'll leave it on charge, top up the tank, I guess, run it to my mechanics and get on with the work. I'll hopefully have an update for you in a few days time. Cheers guys. And we're back in the cheap Nissan Leaf. And it's been a bit of a strange on this because it didn't really need an awful lot of anything. I'm not complaining, of course, it's just new territory for me, this. After leaving it on charge after we last spoke, I got to it the next morning and it was completely full. It had taken the charge and it was nice and easy. And it was showing me a range of 67 miles, which isn't great, don't get me wrong, but it's not bad, actually. When you look on Austrader at used Leafs, some of them have a range of 25 miles. So 67 isn't all that bad. Then I ran it down to my mechanic for an MOT and a general checkover. And about three hours later, my mechanic called me. She said, right, your lease ready. So I thought, all right, well, that's the result. Obviously didn't need anything at all. It passed its MOT with not a single advisory item. And that was it for its mechanical prep. This really is a whole new world, isn't it? There's no oil to change, no spark plugs to change, nothing. If you remember, this car was a bit mouldy in various places where it had been sitting over winter, I think. I think it'd been prepared by the main dealers. I think they'd had it on sale. They didn't tell me that, but I think that's what's happened. Not that it matters, of course, it's probably just overage stock for them, so they've moved it on. The next thing I did then was to take it over to the lads at Tameside Detailing for a full valet. They got rid of all the mold and it came up looking like new. I've ordered a parcel shell for it from eBay because the previous one was missing. That'll be here in the next day or two. And I've also ordered a fresh set of mats for it because it didn't have any. I always try and sell a car with a fresh set of mats. It just lifts it. It's a bit like reg plates. It's a psychological thing, isn't it? But when you open the door and just see brand new carpet, you think, hmm, this is all right, this. Someone's looked after it. And that, I think's about it. It wasn't a huge spend on this. It was quite a quick turnaround. I'm just hoping that it sells quickly. Like I said to you at the start, I've priced this very fairly. I don't know the EV market at all. And the used EV market does concern me a little bit. 
When I typed in the reg and the mileage onto my Auto Trader dealer portal thing, it suggested a retail price of £6,800. So I thought, right, I'll advertise this for 5995 so it looks nice and attractive. I didn't want to do it any cheaper than that because then it looks like a distress sale. And it certainly isn't a distress sale, but I just want it gone quickly. There's no point being greedy because I really don't want this car to take root to the forecourt. And in this job, sometimes you've got one opportunity to sell it and that's it. If you miss it because you're a bit greedy or whatever, you can't close the deal, that might be it then for three months. Especially with something a bit quirky like this. That was my theory anyway. What I've done with my advert as well is put in the realistic range. I always do this with EVs. There's no point trying to be too optimistic about it. This might say, or the manufacturer might say, that this has got a range of 125 miles. It won't do it, so why try and sell it like that? You're just going to have an unhappy, disgruntled customer. We don't like those, do we? Because they make your life a misery. Ask me how I know. Right, well, we're back at the charging station. I'm going to leave this on charge because we're down to 41 miles. And on my recent EV video, Living with an EV, lots of people in the comments said, oh, you're doing EVs all wrong. You need to, you need to charge it regularly. Just top it up every, every time you get the chance. So... That's what I'm going to do. Okay then, before we charge it, I'll talk you through my costs. There we go. So I paid £3,800 for the car, which I thought was cheap anyway. I need some lunch, don't I? Got a rumbling stomach again. £40 for the MOT, £70 for the valet, £90 for the parcel shelf. They're always pricey, aren't they, those? And £15 for the mats. So that gives me a grand total of... 3H3840, 3915 So if I can get my 5995 asking price, it'll leave me a profit of around £2,000, which is quite good, isn't it? Quite good going. Fingers crossed, anyway. So I think that's about it, guys. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers, guys. See you next time.